All right, folks, I'm back with the Naked Gardeners, and today we're going to talk about something that gives many people many, many hours of anxiety, and that's dealing with the NRCS, dealing with the high tunnel grant. Oh my God, what? <laughs> it's. I think it's a lot better. I just got a, a email with, and I'll put it in the links below, but it's NRCS just had a big overhaul. It's pick your state. This is all the requirements that you need for this state. It's fantastic. Um, I've always approached NRCS content from, look, here's how the NRCS actually works. You're not, nobody owes you anything. If you get the grant, fantastic. Don't predicate your whole uh, farm's existence on whether or not you get a grant. If, you, if that's where you're starting from, it's you're not not doing it right. Yeah. Right. So if you get it, it's a great bonus. You can allocate those funds that you should have had ready for that infrastructure that you need for something else, whatever the case may be. So let's. Uh, I want to talk about your instance in in particular, and then I'll add should things be added because people are listening to this all over the country may need some different context. And again, all of the rollouts have came over over the last couple of months. I'm not fully up to date on everything. I'm still going through it. We have meetings with the NRCS in a couple of weeks. I'll know a lot more then, but we're recording this today. Mm -hmm. So, um, NRCS, when did you first hear about it? What were some initial concerns? Where did you go for resources before you even got on there? Well, we first learned from it uh, going to one of our neighboring um, small cottage business. farms. Yeah, cottage farm. They told us about it, and we were like, "Oh!" And they and since with me being a veteran minority, and with her being even females are considered minority, that pushes. In it's like fifty-two percent of you. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, it, that this even push, females <laughs> that push us. In, ah, the dames, huh? Yeah, they, yeah. that just push. You up in front of the list of ever, everyone else. Well, the fact that you were a veteran put you to the front of the line. They were very clear with us when we approached yeah. them. And being a mon minority. And so we, we were interested. So we asked them about that. They're like, oh, yeah, you can do a high tunnel, get a water catchment system. They were telling us different things that they knew about it. Right. And so we was like, oh, okay. And so we asked some of our homesteading friends. They were like, oh, I don't want the government into our business oh, and Here stuff like that. And I was like, why? Yeah, get, me, gonna... get me started on this. So I was like, I didn't understand it. It was like, if the military, or not the military, if the government is willing to pay for your your infrastructure, whatever you need to help better your, your homestead. They're not looking for Coke. No. I mean, they're just... We're not growing weed. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're like, we're not important. And even if you were, they're not going to check your barn and closet. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I'm like, we're not that important for it. I'm like, just follow the regulations and so be it. You know, let's learn the, the pro progress from that. And so it was funny. So we finally went up there and we got approved and everything. And what county are you in? Uh, Lamar. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Lamar County. And so we, we got the funding for it. They paid and we was interested because this was, I guess their first year paying half up front. Well, I will say that, um, that, our experience is that they didn't have a lot of information. Like they, yeah. they were very inexperienced. So what we are asking about, with, especially with water catchment, we are asking about water catchment, and they're talking to us about doing something with our ponds. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> right. Okay. And so this, this is where I, I, I have a lot to fill in the blanks because, <laughs> okay. because this is going to happen no matter who's listening to this. This is what's going to happen. So, in twenty fourteen to twenty sixteen. I was the first person in Lamar County to get an NRCS grant for high tunnel. The same, the same guy you were talking to came out, inspected mine, and at the time he's like, "I don't even know what this is." Which, if you think about it, pay attention, folks. Is your NRCS agent is hired by your county to specialize in the majority of what your county is known for: cattle, cotton, corn, soybeans. For us here in Lamar County. There's no market farmers here, or they're very little. And so being the first person, of course, look, if, okay. you, if you ask me everything about injection molding, well, I'm relatively new to this. And that's not, I don't know about pressures, right? I don't need to know about pressures. Uh, if you're 
a heart surgeon, you're not going to know everything about toenails, <laughs> right? Because right? that's yeah, not, okay. that's not yeah, your specialty. Yeah. If you're a mechanic and you work on Fords and then somebody brings a Fiat, yeah, you may not, yeah, you know where the engine is, but you don't know the specifics. So when we originally wrote the NRCS, you know, the, the big resource that we wrote, it's fairly long. Uh, we're in the process of updating it now based off of all these updates. It's how can the farmer view this from the eyes of their local agent? First of all, understand this is just a human. Yes, they work for the government, but this human goes home to a family and they're just trying to get through their day just like the rest of us. And especially in Texas, North Texas, they're hired on based off that ac expertise. Texas A&M is where a lot of them come from for us. They're not teaching market gardening there. They're talking corn, cattle, soybeans. You know. Texas. We were right. speaking <laughs> a foreign. We were speaking a foreign language um, about a water catchment system. Right. It so, felt like. So our recommendation when you originally wrote the resource is: look, here's all the paperwork you need. Fill it out. Write down any questions that you, that you have. That, by the way, they're probably not going to know the answer for. And when you show up to have your first meeting with these folks, they're like, hey, here's everything you need. Here's my cell phone number. Let me know if I can do anything else, but let's get the process started. Understand that. Now, I will say, I had a conversation, and pretty much the funds are being cut quite a bit next year for Texas. Inflation is, is catching up. Part of that is demand. Not enough people requested this form because they don't want the government on there or they don't they have some aversion to the grant so not enough people asked for it for the budget to include upcoming demand so in order to get these things sometimes you have to play the long game and and ask for the info ask for the grant to even be considered years on down the line and again you can always add a hoop house later on but we have plans to so add another Look, were you guys going to do Hoop House whether you got the grant or not? Yeah. Well, we wasn't thinking of it because we know how much they are and, and things of that nature. We were just going to build like a, a DIY we were gonna, Yeah, we were going to probably yeah. not. you were going to do something. Yeah, yeah I was going to yeah, do something. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I was like, once we found out that we can have the government pay for it, well, I was like, oh. I, I looked at it through the eyes of they have money in this program and it's sitting there and oftentimes it goes unclaimed. And if they don't read, use it, they get less the next year. And that's exactly to where we are right now. And yeah. speaking on that, coming from the military, uh, the military, for my, in my squadron, we're allocated a certain amount per year before we go on a deployment, TY, things of that nature. And they try to spend as much as possible, at least 5% over that cap. Because they know if they don't spend that money, like you were saying, it gets decreased the following fiscal year. And if you're a keyboard warrior and you don't like that, just we're playing the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all it. Whether, whether it's right or wrong, it is what it is. So in the military, in the Air Force, we have tons of tools, a surplus of tools that we never even use and stuff like that. It's been so many times I've had extra amount of tools that they gave to me because it's like we you're every deployment. But it you're allowed it allowed for different missions to be equipped with tools. Yeah. Yeah. But it, and, it, but but with that, and I'm I'm, I'm go ahead. again I I'm I, I, I grew up with base folks. Had you been operating with subpar equipment, think of what's at stake. Mm -hmm. Think of what's at the line. So I this is one time where I'm a big proponent of government spending. I don't want our boys over there and girls over there getting in the shaft because they have a default whatever. Yeah. So I'm okay with it. Yeah. yeah, and and so my thing is to to better allocate the money. This budget, and I know I'm not running for senate or anything, but just why not just budget? What you budget? All right, this is what you're going to get, and just do that. But I understand that's what a lot of people need to uh, have the knowledge that. The NRCS is not going to dictate, okay, you can't throw this, this, then this, and this on there. Because they were very helpful to let us know you you have to grow everything in ground. Now, if you have some type of medical disability, 
you know, we will compensate. You could do a, a raised bed. Yeah, with okay. him being up, a disabled, up to twelve yeah. inches, you can do a raised yeah. bed. Yeah, yeah, and and that was fair enough. And and so I was like, okay, that's. I said, like, now what if? Because we're going to be growing citrus plants. They're going to be in containers. Can we bring them in there for that for the winter months and stuff like that? Like, oh yeah, that's fine and stuff. Then they come to find out they're only going to inspect it that one time. That's that's the thing. Everybody is the, the argument. The big argument is I don't want the government on my land. Yeah. They it's, only come for the inspection. It's your local NRCS agent. They're too busy to give a rat butt. Ass about it. <laughs> they I, don't I w- care. Yeah, I was telling him, and this was weird for me um, when I called in because we were like, why haven't they come? We, I feel like we've been waiting for this inspection. Um, and so I did a follow up call and called in, and, and I, you know, I was like, hey, I, I'm just trying to, I want to start working on the soil and prepping things. We really need to have our high tunnel inspect it because i don't want to invest time and stuff if there's something i need to change and um at no point in time was i asked who i was they knew who i was it had nothing to do with my phone number there was only she said there's only she was like i said do you know do you know who this is she was like i'm gonna call you back later after so and so gets out of a meeting for confirmation and um i was like do you know who you're calling back do you know who i am she said yeah there's only two of them i know who you are you're you're the Hollands, <laughs> right? Right. And look, that these agents—they're busy people, and most of it administrative. I promise you, they want to be in the field more than they want to be in that damn office. <laughs> so, arriving at the the first part of the meeting with everything, it's like, hey, I know you don't. Here's everything you need. Here's the program. Here's the numbers. They can track the numbers, and they'll go do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. But making it easy for the agent. And be not being combative of about it or being apprehensive about who's coming on your land or not, it that's going to. If you, you had you guys or you had somebody that, yeah, I I want to apply for this grant. Which grant? Uh, I think it's called this. Now now you're putting the work on them. Yeah. And if you're a busy person, like we said, who who are you more likely to work with? The people that show up with everything, or the people that are giving you a hard time off the bat. Because you're the man. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And the only bad thing I would say about the NRCS is they require you to do a pre dig test and show that report. But if you're in a rural area, you know, most dig tests aren't going to come on private property. So. You're saying dig, T E S S, dig test, which is making sure there's no utility lines Correct. or yeah. anything like that. Correct. Yeah, yeah, it was a whole process we had to go through and requesting, and they wouldn't even come and do it. Yeah, because they most 811s won't come on private, private properties. You will have to pay third party, which we're not. So it was like a waiting game. Yeah, right. Because those that. could range from anywhere from two fifty to a thousand dollars. And yeah. so I, I'm going to play the part of the devil's advocate for the NRCS on this. It's the NRCS is going okay. We're we're going to allocate these funds. This is this is our money that we're going to give to you to build infrastructure for you. Our requirements are: we are doing this for the conservation of soil. We're not doing this to help you with your thing or you with your business or you for whatever you're trying to do we want to take this block of land and we want to make sure that this soil is conserved this is one of our programs here's the parameters in doing so we want to make sure that if a pipeline comes through or is under there and they need to service it they're not going to tear down our investment for the next usually three years Mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that our investment is protected i get it and now that you explained it like that, open eyes. I can understand that, but if you just say we just need a big test for it. Well, and the, your agent may not look at it that way. It's like I've got this checkbox. I don't like. I don't care. Yeah, I it's just have totally this checkbox. Check yeah. Box. yeah, and and that's what I say. <laughs> it, uh, being, I, I would like to know the why behind the why. I'm like, why does it need need to do a big test? Right. And they couldn't explain it to me. Okay. Well, what happens a lot of time is is we'll have a hang up. I've I've got one. This has been going on for months. One is requiring a stamped engineer drawing. Okay, I've never seen that for an RCS, but it could be tied into a, municip- a municipality that it's required by the municipal system because each office can dictate yeah. its own own terms up to a point, and there's a lot of discretion involved. And with that discretion means these people have helped me, they've not helped me. Or they've been a pain in the ass. So that discretion, if you think about it, 
I know these people. They have good intentions. They're just they're being cool about it. It, it could be one of those things. Mm-hmm. Now this is when you could plug in that. What do you mean to fight these people? <laughs> <laughs> I get out. But uh, 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 they, I, I could, I could, I could see that. In you know, uh, I, I would just like a better explanation why when I say. Well, that would create, as he mentioned earlier, um, that's creating work for them um, to have to explain that. And, man, coming from military mm-hmm. is is so hard coming into the. I mean, even though I've been this out has the, been a tough transition. Yeah, for even him. though I've been out in the civilian world now for eight years now, it's just so hard just to to do one that extra. There's a, an incredible lack of work ethic in the yeah. Military. Yeah. And it, it's compared to military, it it it, it frustrates me so much. But it is what yeah. to me. Well, and, and and again, I'm I'm again gonna defend the agents. There's a lot of times I I have seen that they're not even in town to come to your place or to look up the thing. They're they're having to go to in-state trainings, continuing education. They've got to go speak at this college and this conference and this and that and the other. And they're oftentimes speaking about other conservation situations or their field of like again commodity crops that they're that's their main job i'm interested in learning more uh about their um cover crop programs we, that's something we need and, to... and the best thing i can tell you is the google's your friend mm-hmm. that they I, I will say the nrcs website now is i mean vastly better than what it was even a year ago mm-hmm. uh so they're they are spending the effort in making that better Here's another problem with the NRCS is if you Google anything, you have all these old SEO driven, whether it's good or bad SEO, but it's like, oh, 50,000 people looked at this article. Well, that article is from 10 years ago, (laughs) and it's the only one that keeps resurfacing and resurfacing. That information is so old and out of date. Here comes the rounds of questions, and and it's all different nowadays. I got a question for you. Put you on the spot. If you was head of the NRCS program right now, what is one thing you would change or would like to add? I would like to see a a task force is not the right word, but I would like to see some sub branch that's just for market gardeners underst- and take the time to research everything that look, it's in my best interest for market gardeners to do well because that that's who we service through Bootstrap Farmer. But aside from that, being a past market gardener, being a foodie, I want to make sure that I'm not interested in my local farmer making $5 million servicing the local economy. That's not going to happen. But I'm very interested in that farmer earning a couple hundred thousand dollars, being able to send his kids to college, being able to retire like a regular job track. So I would love to see if we're going to take care of our farmers, and that's one of the things that we're not doing as a country, we're not taking care of our farmers, you know, could we have some type of insurance program, some type of specialized IRA or something like that for retirement to where you're going to choose this lifestyle, you're going to serve your local community, you're going to scale up as the years go, but there's also light at the end of the tunnel where I don't want to be 65 out there. Maybe you do want to do it. But if there's physical limitations because of age, that at least we're going to say, look, we valued you as a person doing this great job that there's not enough of you. Here's here's some fallback. And I'm also a capitalist, right? Like I, <laughs> I, I want those farmers to excel and also take care of that on their own. But there's not a there's not enough resources for market farmers as a profession now because look at what happens. I want to leave my cubicle. I want to start a farm. For not a ton of money, you could at least start. Mm-hmm. And from that start, it's making those mistakes that we talked about earlier and, and the, the cost of education of anybody can become a farmer. You can't go do heart surgery next week. Yeah. yeah. So if the education is years and years of <laughs> making mistakes and learning from them and Hey, we hit a home run on this, but we took three steps back over here, and then the weather kicked us in the butt. Mm-hmm. It's it's a profession that we're not, as a society, valuing enough to put more resources into place. But again, I also don't think we need to, as a government, 
do that. But I think we at least need to offer some type of learning track to go, this is for your area. And, and I do like how NRCS is by state because they do take those things into consideration. But I, I, I would like to think that there's more conferences. There's or more conferences. There's more learning opportunities. If you think about what's going on and what you guys even talked about in the last episode, yet all we have right now is YouTube University in which we could watch some influencers with some courses. Which one do we like? Which ones do we not like? We'll pick that course. But at the end of the day, there's no oversight. There's no regulation. There's no standardization of Joel Salton teaching a course or Michael Kirkpatrick teaching a course or when we had our courses out for that brief time, it was what we thought was best. And all of that information is great, but there's nothing standard. Mm -hmm. And, and there if, has to be considerations for where people are growing too. For sure. What, and yeah. And it all comes down to the crowd. The, the whole, every, almost every single question that comes in via text, email, or phone call to Bootstrap Farmer can be start with, what are you trying to grow? And oftentimes it takes 10 questions for us to pull that out of somebody. Um, heating a hoop house. We're going to talk about heating a hoop house in our, in our thing. Oh, good. It's like, mm -hmm. well, I want to hoop my, heat my hoop house. Great. What's your market look like in this, in this dead of winter? Oh, we don't have a farmer's market. Why do you want to hoop? Who are you going to sell to? I don't know. <laughs> what are you trying to grow? We don't know. Why are you trying to heat something that you don't even know if you're going to grow it or not? And if you did, who are you going to sell it to? Well, and that's another thing in, in uh, the homesteading uh, space that I've come to learn that there's like a theme that people actually put a bunch of their animals in a hoop house during which you can't the winter, do. which you're not when, supposed to do yeah. with the NRCS. Yeah. 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 Which people need to and know I, that. <laughs> and I think that's why a, a lot of them think that they don't want to do anything with the NRCS because some of them possibly will. Do that. A lot of them do it. I yeah. know that they're doing it. Yeah, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're utilizing them to scratch up that area to start to like grow stuff for the spring or whatever the reason is. But again, but, look how long it took you to get. And the only thing that they were going to do is inspect you, right? Mm -hmm. And how long did that take? They're not going to come out and do a surprise visit. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. No, it was totally uh, scheduled, organized. Yeah. Look, I know, look. The rules are in place because that's the rules are in place for what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the benefit is even if you <laughs> did all the rules perfect, you're still going to have a place to grow something great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in whatever the term of the loan is, again, most of the time, three years, then you can do whatever the hell you want. And if you truly want to do something different, then pony up the money and do it. Yeah. yeah. And and that was and that's our, what we're yeah, yeah actually, we were like so what they're gonna come inspect we're gonna, we're not growing anything illegally we're just gonna be growing what we need to grow and I I want to specify it's not illegal but it's outside of the contract that you signed Correct. for that yeah. purpose it's gonna be tomatoes some maybe some herbs and cucumbers and whatever else There's yeah nothing, we're figuring that out yeah, yeah. it's nothing. I, out the norm. It's no different than Bootstrap Farmer going, hey, we will send you a hoop house for free. We did this once, 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 once. Oh. And don't, don't. Because I'm this like, didn't, I tell you something. Can I sign up for this yeah, yeah, this didn't happen again because somebody ruined it. Somebody ruined it. Oh, we won't ruin it, I promise. I know you won't. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a crook. <laughs> so the first all metal hoop house. Hey, man, we, we've been working with you for a little bit. We're going to send you a free one. Will you do an unboxing video and a 10-minute, this is how I built it. All we need is one video because we need to beta test it out in the world before we start selling this. Oh, yeah, yeah, fine. It's been three years. I'm still waiting on the video. But that doesn't stop somebody from the same person to go, hey, can I get, get a discount on the 60-pack of trays? No, dude, we're still waiting on this video. And by the way, nothing is going to get you a discount from here on out because you broke our rules. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's not illegal. You know, wow. I understand life happens and things get in the way. But when we reach out, when you reach out to us because you want something for free, and we go, okay, we need a little bit of deliver of deliverables. It's mm -hmm. the, and we're going to have this conversation yeah. in our series yeah. about yeah. Uh, how how to become sponsored from Bootstrap Farmer. Well, <laughs> we'll we'll get into that. Yeah. Let's but have but this it's talk. like it's it's not. 
we get three or four inquiries a day. I can, can imagine. You, can I can you, imagine. Can you sponsor our farm? Can you do this? Hey, we'll put you in front of our audience. Do what you have. And it's not an audience number thing for us. It's like we watch people for months before we approach them and go, hey, we like what you're doing. Here's a little, we do it project by project, you know, kind of thing. We set our own rules. The NRCS has set their own rules mm -hmm. because they're after numbers of does this protect this watershed? Yeah. And I think, I think if you'll go into the NRCS thinking about this isn't for me, this is somebody's offering me this, but in return, they're going to get what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are considering um, not utilizing the NRCS for our water catchment system yeah. um, because their rules have it such and the uh, prices have basically tripled. Oh, NRCS is not caught approve. up with inflation by no. far. No, no. And, and the stuff that they will approve is absorbently more expensive now that we're like, okay, there's a bunch of other options we have that wouldn't pass at NRCS, but we can afford it, um, not using them. And yeah. you hit the nail on the head. You you decided through research that that wasn't right for you. You didn't have to waste their time. And you didn't go on Facebook and go, ah, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, you no. know, whatever everybody does. Why, why complain about a free money option? Yeah. Um, you I, know? I've been in workshops where people have stood up and went on – Long ranty tirades. Not that I'm. <laughs> you don't do that. Yeah, do no, you? not at all. Not at all. But but it's like, is this guy going to get kicked out of this conference? It it was bonkers. Oh wow. And it was didn't want the government on his land. Emotional outbursts. I hate to tell you, but your county tax assessor is looking at your land some way or another, yeah. whether that's on Google Earth or by airplane or whatever. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, we can't get away from it, mm -hmm. you know. So it's again play the game. Yeah. yeah, and this is the game for the other thing that happens is, and what happens to our to our colleague that lost their high tunnel last week is it wasn't properly explained to them that he was under the impression that NRCS was going to cover all of the cost. Well, not only do you get judged on it, does your land qualify, and if it does, how far does your land qualify? So there, you know, it can be as low as you know. Two dollars a square foot up to four fifty a square foot, mm -hmm. and it varies depending on their definition of what the NRCS is, not what we as market gardeners would hope it would be. Hell, I wish everybody got a grant. I mean, we'd sell more high tunnels, right? But you're going to get funded for X amount, and the most it's going to cover is the most basic of basic poly tunnels. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cover ventilation or roll up sides and, and insect netting and and shade cloud. Yeah. It's it's by square footage. And by the way, it's you got approved for seventy two hundred dollars, which is let's just say as uh seventy two by eighty. Well if if you buy a seventy two by one hundred, it's not gonna give you the square foot it's gonna cover up to seventy yeah. five hundred dollars. You're not gonna get additional. Mm -hmm. So that I think that's another thing that trips people up is Here's your recommendation. And, and a lot of times NRCS will go, it's 30 by 72, 30 by 100, whatever the case. But you can also take that because it's funded by square footage and go, let's do a 20 by 100 or equal equivalent like that. So you have options yeah. as far as that Something goes. Something that uh, impressed us with Fuchsia, because we've, you know, we've been fans of the products for a long time with the trays and everything like that. So naturally we're like, oh, y'all have high tunnels too. What we appreciated when we were going through our process was calling, because we had ideas for something way more expensive, um, and it's not like we were and talking. Julian been very helpful. Julian, yeah. yeah. He was like, oh, you're in Texas? Oh, you don't need the gothic thing. You, you guys were just very honest. All this whole stuff. I mean, yeah, Julian was very helpful. He, he, it's, most companies were like, oh, yeah, you're going to need this, this, and this, and this, right. and this. Julian was like. Don't, you don't need that. You could get regular tunnels. We don't get snow besides the last two years, but you know. <laughs> it, it's hard. It's hard to find that type of honesty. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to to truly help somebody. The reason we have an all metal kit is because I'd gone through the process. I had an idea for what a high tunnel could be, and it was what we designed. And the a main thing for me is, as you know, I'm how tall are you? Okay, I'm six one. I wanted to be able to use my sidewalls and grow up to the sidewalls and that's mm -hmm. very well how how much how much room do i have at the sidewalls i'm six one and i can stand a foot away from it and i yeah. hit and i hit 
So I wanted a taller tunnel. Wanted it made in the U.S. We, not only did we get it made in the U.S., but it's fabricated in Texas. And I went into this knowing what the NRCS process was because I had been through it myself previously to coming on to a bootstrap That's farmer. That's a unique lens. So if we can build a high tunnel that covers my needs as a grower and incorporate NRCS stuff in the meantime, that's why we've never got denied. In all the states that we sell to, except for this one that's just <laughs> in some weird jurisdiction that the municipality is getting pulled into, and Denver. <laughs> which, 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 which state is that? <laughs> <laughs> like nobody knows. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's almost impossible to get any type of structure in Denver built. Well, we were just listening to um, and, them And talk. not that it doesn't qualify, sorry, not that it doesn't qualify for you uh, in RCS, but it won't pass municipality, no matter what we do. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I was just going to say, um, speaking on that state in particular, like people cannot collect water. It's like illegal um, there. Yeah, Coors needs it. <laughs> well, it, it was crazy. I was listening to this. It's 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 funny how it a, a lot of people think about the pricing and things of that nature. And we were talking about it, the quality. You know how we had this uh, high tunnel from y'all compared to somebody that built uh, had three other high tunnels from another company. Uh, I forgot what the company was, but they, oh yeah, we could have we got ours cheaper than that for the price of three. We could have yeah, you know, and no in walls and yeah. no doors. Yeah, and you had to go by the hip and you had to go by yeah. the base. And then there's through the tornado that we just had last weekend, and ours stood tall. Without You're not any, that far from them, are you? No, no that was right We're up the road. Hot skipping the jump. We went to breakfast to see their devastation. Yeah. Less than ten minutes away, and there's there two in. There of the three in our uh, tunnels, three of them that they're, they're it was just, yeah it was just classified metal and, and EF four tornado. They're just like ripped tornado. down and stuff like and y'all do good quality uh, metal poles. That's and something because he's so OCD um, with measuring stuff out and and um, like doing the <laughs> the entire math behind it and everything. He was driving me crazy about I, it. I was so paranoid. It, it took me about three days before I even did did anything and I saw your video like you could be off by four inches four inches and I'm off by like half an inch oh yeah he was, he was, he was sweating over half an inch being off like I've said this a million times the hardest part about our job is writing an instruction manual that somebody with no building experience can read somebody that's an engineer can read the engineers hate our instruction manuals because it's not down to the millimeter mm -hmm. and I'm like this is not what this is. This <laughs> he is. Yeah, he like, was not struggling a just a little bit. Yeah, I was like, this should be right here. This is the... and, and I'll tell you something. I've been to, I don't know, 50 hoop houses that directly came from the, us and probably another four or 500 from all over the place. I've never seen two hoop houses built the same. Is that... I, I've been to places that have two of ours right next to each other, not built the same. Guess what? They still work. Yeah. It's that old, that it all roads lead to the top of the hill. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. And, and the plastic cover hides all. Yep, yep. It does. Yep. And, and that was a good thing about, and I think what kind of messed up his high tunnel, he rolled his high tunnel up to allow air to get up. And, kind of and without in walls. Yeah, you, know, you can't yeah. do it. Yeah. And, and with that kind of power. It, you know? and, and that's that's why I'm hesitant about Caterpillar tunnels, because that wind can get under there. And you're just you have this parasail mm -hmm. that the wind is pushing up, and it's gonna pull. It's gonna yeah. pull it out. And I, I think that was another factor that kind of messed up his. But if you time. buy if you buy something for two thousand dollars versus four thousand dollars, and it has end walls and has a little bit better ground posts and not a piece of rebar, you know you're in the ground. Yeah. You know, in the inspection for our tunnel, um, what was commented was how. Uh, nice and and beefy the structure, but it, we I, I had to tell them it was because of the the extra trellising uh, that was put in. Yeah, 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 that they were actually complimenting that. Yeah, how much more well I'm glad they liked it was. It. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. So, but it it's just it's just one of those things. Look, from the time you apply to the time you get inspected, it's how long has it been? Oh my gosh! A couple of well, years. Well, it was chilly because uh, you they <laughs> remember you met us up there, right? 
uh, and th they were joking in the office about that looking shady that the bootstrap person was <laughs> <laughs> like meeting us. Some yeah. drug it was a joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the whole thing was a joke. Hey, whatever we got to do to make the sale, right? <laughs> yeah, but it was chilly. It was like the first cold day. It was in a fall. Yeah, I think it was. It's yeah. been a, like it's a, been a whole, about a year. Or in the spring. Yeah, yeah look, I mean, it, yeah, it was a joke, but more often than not, one of us here at the company will talk to an RCS agent or, look, this is our clients, right? We'll do whatever we can. And if we need to talk to the agent or can you explain this or, or what's this or I need another resource, like you needed uh, something the other day about the plastic. Yeah. And like like we wouldn't sell it without the right plastic, right? But he, he again, it was a checkbox. Yeah. It, and as soon was. as he saw it, he, and that was that. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the mill. They the... wanted to know what the mill, that was the only thing holding up the finalization of the inspection because... was not no not having that stamped on the plastic. And it was. He just didn't see it. Yeah. Well, I was pointing at something that I thought it was, and it turns out it, it was. Actually. But the funny thing is, is I gave them y'all stamp. I showed them this y'all stamp thing that from the, on your website and everything. I, and I'm pretty sure he, I don't know. Anyway, um, I, was able to go to the, I went on my phone, took a screenshot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Luckily, everything was readily available on the this week, yeah. On the website. Yeah, it was super right. simple. All right, so after going through the process, everything involved, how was your, if you had a, a one to five star review, how would you rate your NRCS experience? The only bad thing, I was rated a four. What wouldn't, Put them. What would put them at a five was if they would have been more in detail on what the what they're looking for, all their requirements into the tunnels, more explainable. I guess it should be. You just want you just want to know the why behind the the Correct. check yeah. Mark. transparency. Yeah, right. because just because you need this, this, and this, you know, just tell me why of, of that nature. What what are you looking for when you're coming out for to inspect and stuff like that? Uh, like the, coming from the military, we always prepare for our, we do rough scenarios if we're in the deployment, if things get attacked, you know, this, we got to cover this. And if they tell us what's going to be missed, you know, we, we'll be able to prepare for that for the following, you know, to give us weird scenarios. Well, it just caused a lot of apprehension on decision making on his part of not having clear transparency on some stuff even though you're doing a good job you just yeah. always question yourself yeah like, uh, and that's common i mean nobody wants to make a mistake especially when you know things cost so much oh and, yeah and <laughs> you know it, the uh, look you guys are just down the road just imagine for sometimes we have to ship to maine and new hampshire and michigan Ooh, and man. seattle like you're if something got damaged or missing or broke or whatever we would have to send it, and you're four days behind schedule, and that's why when we train our people at the warehouse, it's like like we had them build the Gothic out at Carl's just so they would understand the frustration of if you don't have everything, well, we had to drive back to the warehouse. Just imagine if you had to wait four, five, six days, or uh, one th couple of things I always tell people is if you're going to have a bunch of people out to your place, like we did when we put the plastic on, have that thing squared up. Don't let 20 people watch you do math. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants that. And then the second thing is, you know, when, when it gets time to do the cover, as you're inviting people, say, hey, we're going to do this cover thing. If you can come and help out, here's Bootstraps Farmer's five-minute video on how to put plastic on. That way, when they show up, they already kind of know what's going on, but somebody needs to take charge. Yeah. You know, we're going to do this. If you have any questions, ask me. We're going to do it nice and slow. It always goes, goes quicker than what you think. And being courageous enough to say, hey, I know everybody just showed up, but the wind just picked up real bad. We're going to, we're going to have to put this off. So I, I, I don't know. It's High tunnels is a stressful situation <laughs> time in people's lives, and we understand that. There's a lot of investment. You know, we, we think about things as we – we don't want anybody to have a bad experience kind of thing, right? So no. it's, we, we try to do everything we can. Once it leaves our hands, you know, <laughs> what what the freight does with it in between yeah. us and you is sometimes shaky, but 99% uh, of the time it gets there with no flaws, and there's a couple of questions calling our tech line. We're also open seven days a week, which 
if it's a Saturday and you call in, usually, especially this time of year, we just have one pe- person working, you know, they'll call you right back. Just leave a message because if you hang up or like, rip, I guess you figured it out. So, or contact the bootstrapfarmer.com. We're here for you. And if you need us to talk to the agent, we're more than happy to do so. We do it all the time. We, uh, we speak agent. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that was back, what, three, four years ago when I first bought your trays and I got one of y'all trays and one of them had, I don't know, I, and we still have that tray, and it still has a leak. I don't know why I still keep that tray. And I had called it up, called y'all up, and like, hey, I got one of y'all trays, and it's leaking and stuff like that. That's when uh, we became fans. Yeah, and it, I, I reached a person, and it was like, oh, okay, we'll send y'all the tray. And I got it. I didn't know y'all was that close and right. everything, but I got it within that week. And I'm like, oh, I didn't have to, like, show a picture of it, dispute it, give my part order number and anything like that. Like, we haven't hmm. abused the system. Yeah. That's the funny thing about manufacturing is is people think that, well, this is a manufactured product. It's going to be exactly perfect every time. Man, it's just like growing. Mm. I mean, there's always something that can be off or We're still weird. Learning. Yeah. yeah about different insects yeah. and infestations and you get all this stuff right and you know there's something <laughs> well and it's also one of those things where if you mess up with one person usually they, they get all of the mess ups we've saved up for the month and we're gonna you know it's like six times that they get a uh, situation and yeah. we just have to hit reset because out of the other thousand literally thousands of boxes that goes out to, out a week we have one problem so that's weird i'm happy that we were able to just pick it up on location. <laughs> so, well, like I said, folks, uh, we are updating the NRCS resources. We we are in meetings, at least with the Texas uh, branch here upcoming, to you know learn as much as we can to pass that information on to you. Don't be afraid of the NRCS. They're not the big bag of wolf. They are fans of you, but they have a job to do. So just mm-hmm. keep that in mind. I'm glad you guys had a great experience. Thank you for buying our stuff. Uh, also, it's just fun to come out and work on y'all's farm it's proximity is a big deal for us because <laughs> if i can come actually uh, be a part of it it's fantastic and uh, you have been great hosts i appreciate, I appreciate it yeah we, we appreciate you we guys we always love our fans viewers to come out and show our progress with an appointment <laughs> yes <laughs> we just need to start showing more of a progress now because yeah we've so been kind of like from now we can yeah. like this is what it used to look like. This is what our soil now looks like. We have tons of footage and stuff, and it's really something that will unfold as time goes. Uh, because, like, I'm getting into the winter season. I, I imagine more editing will get done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And inside projects. <laughs> yes. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks again. Folks, this is going to clear out 2022. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know how it that seems happened. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> right. So, uh, beginning next week. First week of uh, January, uh, Tori and I are going to have a little, um, you know, a little run of a, a special thing. Yeah. Uh, may have some guests if time allows, and we'll just see how that goes. But, hey, thanks, everybody, for a great year. Uh, reach out to the NRCS agents to see what they can do for us. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We'll see you later. Yeah.